I'm Ann Applebaum. I'm the director of the Transitions Forum here at the Legatum Institute, and I'm really pleased to be interviewing Azar Nafisi, uh, the best-selling author of Reading Lolita in Tehran. And she's here tonight at Legatum to talk about her new book, The Republic of Imagination, America in Three Books. Uh, she will be speaking uh, on her book, but also on the topic of the relationship of literature and prosperity. What is, do, do prosperous societies need literature? Is that something that's necessary um, in, in order to qualify as a, as a good society, as a, as a society where people live well? Um, Azar, can, can <laughs> but, I ask you to answer that? Well, well, this is a wonderful question because that is what basically my whole book is all about because I ask the question, um, can a democracy exist without a democratic imagination? Because I think prosperity in a democratic society is not at all separate from the act of thinking and the act of imagining. Um, you have to be able to have an idea and, and be able to have the ability to risk seeing that idea actualized, and you can't do it without being able to imagine and know the past, be able to reflect upon the present, and imagine something that has not happened before. Uh, and, and Prosperity is about well-being, and well-being in a democratic society means accountability, responsibility, and responsibility and accountability would not exist without a knowledge of the world around you, without the knowledge of yourself, and without the knowledge of what it means, um, what, what you want of this world. And uh, all of this go with imagination and, and with humanity. But why fiction? Why couldn't we get all that? Why couldn't we get the understanding of the world from reading the newspaper? Why, why fiction? Well, well, we can. That is why in a democracy, in the same manner that you, a, democra a democracy is multivocal, so many different voices talk in opposition to one another as well as to one another, uh, all areas of human endeavor need their own independence because each of them play a different kind of fiction. Uh, I'm sorry, a different kind of fun function. And, 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 and the difference between news and uh, uh, fiction, as Ezra Pound said, um, literature is news that always remains news. Literature connect is a sort of guardian of memory uh, because fiction tells us about the life that has already gone. This moment that you and I are talking will be gone. And fiction becomes conclusive evidence that we have lived. As human beings, we have continuity. But at the same time, especially modern fiction that started in 18th century with the democratic revolutions uh, in Europe, modern fiction is democratic in form, in structure, because a great author gives voice to every character, goes under the skin of every character, including the villain. You know, you, you don't judge first, you understand. And, and I feel that understanding is the most, uh, one of the most um, uh, beautiful virtues of, 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 a, of a democracy, um, you know, and, and, and you can't even go to war without getting under the skin of your enemy and knowing that how they feel and, and, and what they feel. So imaginative knowledge in the form of fiction, it is also about all the principles of democracy, freedom of choice. At the center of the English novel, there is always a woman, the subversive figure of a woman, who says no. I will not go according to the conform conventions of what my parents tell me or what my society tells me. I choose the man that I want to. And, and they go through criticism, not of just of the world, but self-criticism, questioning the self, which I feel is very important, even in Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice. Elizabeth grows and matures and becomes um, deserving of love once she sees herself through the eyes of Darcy and she sees that she had been too prejudiced as he sees that he has been too proud. So you have to go through this process of cleansing and, and, and questioning. And a democracy is nothing without questioning. And that, that can happen in other kinds of political systems, or? Well, I think that no matter what political system you live under, you definitely need imagination and ideas because they become the potentials for, for becoming free. They, I mean, you know, when I lived in Iran, um, 
all the real spaces, almost all the real spaces, were taken away from us. So how do we um, create a space in which we can breathe freely? It would be through imagination and ideas, because they can torture you, they can put you in jail, but there is nothing much, pretty much, that they can do about ideas. And that is why the first target of um, authoritarian societies are usually women, minorities, and culture, uh, the, the three things that question the monopoly of voice in authoritarian societies. And as you know better than I am, both in Eastern Europe, but in countries like China or Iran, this is what people do, which no power can completely squash. You know, no power can, you know, uh, they can burn books, but they can destroy them. Thank you. We're looking forward to hearing more this evening. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here.